When was the concept of museum born? We will now focus on the main trajectories that brought to the birth of a modern concept of museums. The practice of collecting and preserving artifacts with the aim of a cultural communication has ancient roots. However, the idea of a modern museum is derived from the Renaissance reuse of the Greek term museion, meaning a place dedicated to the muses, patron deities of the arts. Among the best known ancestors of our modern museums is the so-called Wunderkama or Kunschkama, meaning the Chamber of Wonders. The creation of these spaces started in the 16th century, then developed during all the 17th and until the 18th centuries. Rooms, generally owned by the elites, were filled with the most disparate objects. These collections of wonder were born as a consequence of the fervor of the time following the discoveries in the colonial territories, together with a humanistic and scientific approach to the world. Indeed, the desire of bringing order and cataloging of a huge bulk of knowledge was widespread at that time. In this sense, the creators and owners of these Wunderkammern were midway between collectors and scientists, and they might be considered the forerunners of modern museum curators. The objects contained in some of these rooms became the nuclei of many modern museums. The British Museum, for example, was born thanks to the Wunderkammer of the Irish doctor Sir Hans Sloan, secretary of the Royal Society in 1753. He had collected around 70,000 archaeological and naturalistic objects, and in order to create a universal museum, he gave the entire collection to the King George II. The museum started to acquire its modern connotation in the 18th and 19th centuries. The first museums were made of rooms crammed with objects, almost not accessible and visible to visitors. Until the early 1800s, the paintings were exposed on the walls altogether. This type of exhibition was called salon style. Just think about the famous painting of Samuel Morse, for example, which represents an exhibition at the Louvre in 1832. All the paintings are represented one adjacent to the other, even the famous Mona Lisa. To make a short parenthesis, the Louvre was born in 1793 with a precise symbolic and political meaning. Napoleon transformed it into a sort of universal museum with the aim of exposing the war spoils and gave the task of curating the collections to Dominique Vivant Venon. In the middle of the 19th century, the formula of the Salon started to have a great success and has become one of the first examples of exhibition organized after a selection of the participants. At the beginning, the Salon of Paris hosted only members of Académie Royale de Peinture et Sculpture. After the French Revolution, artists who were not members were allowed to participate as well. In 1863, Napoleon III started the Salon of Refusé, hosting the artworks not admitted to the main salon. He took the initiative in order to give to the public the role of deciding on artists' exhibit. Among the artists who exposed their works there uh, were Pissarro, Renoir, Manet and Cézanne. At the beginning of the 20th century, a new concept of museum started to grow up and the practice of exhibiting art was changed. Indeed, each artifact was considered of unparalleled importance and as a consequence, the space between them began to increase. The concepts of exhibitions and uh, curatorship were becoming definitely modern and they have not finished to develop yet. The last decades have been characterized, as stated by David Balzer, by the attempt of captivating the public. Among the strategies applied, there were First, an increase of so-called blockbuster exhibitions, then the appearance of a large number of public relations specialists, the birth of the bookshops with products with a museum brand sold, and the renewing of the museum spaces by some famous architects. Nowadays, the relationship and communication with the public are of utmost importance. The museums and the cultural institutions in general, they have to struggle against the lack of fundings and they have to adapt and change at the pace of society. So let's recap, a museum, should be meant as a space where knowledge is classified, ordered, but also reinterpreted, stimulating the desire of knowing and understanding more and more. The contemporary museum should be, in fact, a very democratic institution, which should be able to communicate constantly with society.